Sup nerds, I'm Nick and let's talk about Vice. Vice, directed by Adam McKay, will soon be in cinemas. The biopic of Dick Cheney, one of the most influential, revered, hated and respected political figures in American history, finally gets his stories told on screen. Now here's the problem. Where is the fact? Where is the fiction? And is it any good? Stay tuned to find out. So nerds, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the video. Keep an eye on our Facebook page, and especially our Instagram. We do competitions, we do reviews, we do opinion pieces, and we're always here for you with fun, nerdy stuff. Now, onto the film. Vice, directed by Adam McKay, who's done such films as The Other Guys. He's made films such as The Big Short, and we all remember him for Anchorman. This is a sort of departure from some of those comedies, but more along the lines of what he did with The Big Short. So Vice focuses on Dick Cheney and his rise to power from his humble beginnings. And by humble, I mean Dick was a bit of a loser. You know, one of the more interesting things about the movie is at the beginning, they lay it out. Dick Cheney is a secretive guy. Most of the stuff they're piecing together is by secondhand information or what they can scrape together. And the movie does an opening text to admit that they've done their best. And it's a tough job. Speaking as a person who studied politics, Dick Cheney's always been a fascinating man, a man who has managed to wield and influence change in the biggest ways. One of the biggest figures of the 80s, a person that came back to prominence in the thousands and transformed the Bush administration to a powerhouse of political prestige. But here's the thing, the movie's not about politics. No, when you watch this movie, it's about love and it's about power. One of the most interesting things about the movie is the dynamic between Christian Bale and Amy Adams. Christian Bale disappears under prosthetics and once again putting on an incredible amount of weight to become Dick Cheney. Where most political figures are played with a sort of larger than life portrayal, Dick Cheney is played very cerebrally. He sits quietly in corners, contemplating and Bale's ability to create faces to let us know he's thinking and concocting ideas makes Dick Cheney one of the most interesting performances. For something so understated, it's so ingeniously done. Amy Adams plays his wife. And one of the most interesting things is Amy plays her with a sort of fire, brilliance, and sincere love. The two together actually form one of the most interesting couple movies. Dare I say it probably should have been released during Valentine's Day because the story of Dick Cheney is this is a powerful man who is made powerful by his wife, a person who began as a loser and after a slap behind the ears by his wife becomes geared towards gaining power and climbing the political ladder. But it's not just about Amy Adams and Christian Bale. It's about an all-star studded cast led by the likes of Steve Carell, um, Sam Rockwell, Tyler Perry. There's some big names floating in there. And the more you watch it, the more it begins to reveal little tricks and treats. See, Adam McKay hasn't just put these, name in because, these names in because it's a political movie. He's put these names in because each person is a treat because they're playing someone significant. But one of the biggest problems in the movie is they don't explain who these figures are. And this is why it's not about politics, it's about power. We see how Dick changes things, how he goes in and he studies with Donald Rumsfeld how to manipulate or influence people, how to gear and present things. We actually get an idea that Dick understands branding. I think one of the most impactful scenes is when Dick Cheney asks Donald Rumsfeld, what do we believe? And if you know anything about neoconservative critiques in many political writings, there's always been a question of that. But as time goes on, we understand the essence of the beltway power of the White House, around the White House. It's not about what you stand for, it's about what you can do. And Dick gets stuff done. By the time we meet Sam Rockwell, who plays George W. Bush, we have an interesting moment where we see a man who is completely out of his water, helped by a man looking to climb and make the vice president's position something more influential, even darker. And this is when the movie goes from being comedic and lighthearted and somewhat touching to all the more shocking, because what we get in there are facts. And this is what's interesting. The movie walks that thin line between fiction and fact. Sometimes it does a humorous aside to Richard III, other times it focuses on how power and politics creates a very dark US, US foreign policy. And as time goes on, you're pulled in. And that's the thing, the movie pulls you in each chapter. 
it gets more riveting. It gets more funny. Dick Cheney's heart attacks become something to look out for. And trust me, there's no way I'm going to spoil that for you. Just watch and check it out. Christian Bale may get an award just for the heart attacks alone. But one of the most remarkable things is the final stage of the movie. For something so intricately plotted out, like a symphony building to a large crescendo, the fortissimo, if you will, the loudest moment, as each story and each chapter and struggle for Dick Cheney comes together, the movie fumbles the ball. What's fascinating is the most important chapter of the Bush administration is rushed through. And while we get a nice visual metaphor for what's happening, what's lost is the details. And this is why I'd say it wouldn't be political. Because when you lose the important details of a movie that's studying the power of a political institution, well, that's a damn shame. Because had it been a bit more refined and a bit slowed itself down to study those moments, we could have had what would have been the best picture winner of the year. But what we get is one of the best lead performances for a male in Christian Bale, one of the best performances in A.B. Adams' career, who is constantly underappreciated, Adam McKay directing almost perfectly. And somewhere along the line, the writing team falls. So after Christmas, if you're looking for a movie that's thought-provoking, funny, and adult, Vice is the film you're gonna wanna take that special someone to. It's touching, it's romantic, it's thought-provoking, and it is a must-see. So this Christmas, remember, take a little vice. For Movie Nerds, I'm Nick, and I'll see you nerds at the movies.